Good morning, everybody. This is Karen. Somebody was asking about tracing in scalp or shortcuts a lot. So I am doing a video to show you how you can do that. I want to find a certain flower and I still haven't found it, but I have found some good examples of images that will trace well. Um, I'm going to use this one. It's a royalty free clip art file. So that's not a problem. Mind you, it's got a watermark on it. So I see royalty free, meaning you can purchase it and then it's royalty free. So this is not going to be a good choice. If I click on it, it will take me to the site where I can pay for it. Um, and I wanted something free. So I'm going to go back to my search here and I'm going to choose, oh, that's got watermarks all over it too. Let's see, just find something simple. And I'm only doing this to show you how to trace anyway. I won't be using it. But still, I like to be careful about that. Okay, let's try this one. Um, okay, I'm going to use this. I wouldn't actually use it in real life because it does belong to somebody. I'm just going to put this into my Dropbox screenshots and it's a modern floral tattoo. So I'll close this back up again. And by the way, you get to this screen when you do a search for a modern flower, for example, and you click images, then it's going to show you all the images that it finds for that. So back to Scal, and I'm using Scal version 3 in Windows. Now I click the File Trace Image button and I browse for my file which is this one over here. I'll open it and it shows me how it's going to trace right over here and it already looks excellent. I'm going to show you some of the different settings. You can show the source image behind your trace lines so that you can see exactly what's happening. There's only one thing I would suggest that would be make this a lot easier and I haven't found a way oh there we go found it that you need to be able to make your image larger so all you do is drag out the box and now you can see a good large image of what you will be tracing. Okay so that solves that problem. Um, now I don't need to show my source image because you see once you have a bigger view of your preview now you can see how smooth your lines are and if you've got any problems there that you want to correct with adjustments. I can also show my nodes. Nodes are points that you can use to move things around and edit your image once you've, imp once you've traced it. Um, Another thing you can do is you can increase the contrast. I'm going to show you what that does with another image in a second. You can soften your lines. You need to update the preview once you make a change so that this is actually a little bit better. It's not, it doesn't have such jagged edges in some places. I'll show you the difference if you decrease that value. I'm going to go down to 76. Maybe I'll go a little bit further so you can see more of a difference. Going down to 47. You see how jagged those lines are beginning to be? You have some angles here, very sharp edges in here. I want that a lot smoother, so I'm going to bring that back up to 100 where it was. And the other thing that happens when you change values, watch the number of nodes up here. Where you've got nodes is where your cutter is going to stop as it goes around your image. It's going to make it take a lot longer to cut if it has more nodes. It won't necessarily be obvious to you that it's stopping, but as far as the, the software is concerned, it is stopping. So update your preview and now you're going to see there are less nodes as it's smoother. Because let's go back down to 50. <laughs> show the nodes. Now I'm going to update and now you see how many more nodes there are. Wherever you've got one of those angles, a jagged edge, you've got a node. So we'll bring it back up to 100 and change the nodes by updating the preview. 
and you have many less nodes now. So I'm going to take the nodes off. You can also get more detail or less detail. I think in this image it's not going to make much of a difference because it's a very good image for tracing. It's got a lot of contrast. Oh, I see. Okay, it takes away some of the details anyway. Uh, I guess the inner parts of the flower. Let's see. Yeah, exactly. So you can play around with that setting. I think I had it up around somewhere near 75. No, it was higher than that. Oh, that's right. It was about 98. I'm going to put it there. So it gets all my details. Uh, let's see what else. You can optimize, and this decreases the number of nodes. Let's go up to 80, and watch what happens. Check the node number. It's up over here. And there you go. You can also break apart outlines. Now what that means is that when you bring it into your software, once you trace it, each of these will be broken apart rather than grouped. You can make a blackout image um, and you can add layers for print and cut. <coughs> so I'm going to do a blackout just to show you. And now all you've got is the outline. It didn't take away this piece, but everything else is gone. So that would work also if you wanted to do print and cut. So I'm going to take this away, update my preview again. And I'm going to click OK so that it traces my image. And there it is. And you can see as you drag it out, there are the cutting lines. You can decide whether you want to have a fill color or not by changing that setting over here on the right. This way you only see your cutting lines. And you can change the color for your cutting lines. If you wanted it to be pink, you could do that. A dark pink color whatever you like so I hope that's helpful thanks for watching